All right, welcome to Blue Sports Bar. Another ugly ball game for Florida State. The bottom line is they get out of there uh, with a W, and that's what's most important. I, I think particularly in a year so far in college football where schizo is probably the key word. I mean, figure, try to figure uh, what's going on week to week in this game. Uh, one thing we do know, there's really not a dominant team. Anything can happen on any particular Saturday. I know that's a cliche, but that really comes into play so far this year in college football. My name is Rick Ballou. This is my sports bar. I am on 1010XL and 92.5 FM right here in Jacksonville each and every day, 3 to 7, sometimes 3 to 6 during the football season. You can get me on Twitter, Ballou, B-A-L-L-O-U, 1010XL. Also stream us by going to 1010XL. Dot com. All right, ugly game. I mean, you're playing in front of Wake Forest, 20,000 people. It's raining. They've had 15 days off. They kind of slept walk. Um, that, that's basically what it is. There's no other way to really describe it. Uh, I thought offensively, they were obviously sluggish after Cook went out. Uh, defensively, they stayed on the field. Uh, they committed too many penalties. Uh, they made some mistakes. I think what you have to understand right now, and clearly a rebuilding year, for Florida State is that they're going to continue to win ball games, but they're going to be ugly. That's the way it was last year with Jameis and all those NFL players. That's the way it's been early on this year. They can't put teams away. South Florida, BC, Wake Forest, finding a way, hanging on, getting out of there with a W. Enter Miami, a desperate Kane team, a ball club that may be playing for Al Golden's future. Nothing to lose. I think Florida State right out of the gate catches a break with this being a night game. I'm more concerned about next week's game with Louisville after they get a bye week and an early noon ball game. To me, that's going to be the more difficult game of the two. Louisville almost knocked off Clemson. They almost knocked off Auburn. Miami now should be able to, you know, get the attention of everyone concerned. Nationally, it doesn't have the same appeal. Uh, the talking heads and what have you, they're not giving it a great deal of attention. But you, as a Noel fan, you understand how important this is. You won five in a row. You won six out of the last seven. The only loss, the fumble or the drop ball in the end zone uh, by Fortson uh, from Christian Ponder. If not, it'd be seven straight in this rivalry between Florida State and Miami. It's pretty simple. Is Dalvin Cook going to be able to play? Didn't practice Monday. Did not practice Tuesday. Be surprised if he does anything really at all this week. My understanding is it wasn't a major pull. It was more of a tweak. It was good to see him jumping on the sidelines in the second half last week at Wake Forest. If he can play, it's a much easier task to go out there and win a football game. If he's out, then all of a sudden, I think Florida State becomes one-dimensional. Listen, Vickers is young. He didn't particularly impress me. Uh, I thought his speed was lacking. He needs more touches. We'll see was very disappointed that Jock Patrick did not get an opportunity. I know he came in for two plays when Vickers went out, but he didn't get an at bat. He pass blocked on one play. They threw a ball to him that was at his feet, and it was an incomplete pass. I really wanted to see this guy get a couple of carries. That didn't happen. Overall, Florida State, if Cook can't play and they take away the running attack, that becomes an issue because Florida State has struggled this year passing the football. Miami has a pretty good Pass secondary. Overall, Miami's got athletes. Where they're lacking right now is depth and experience. On the offensive side, there's not a team worse in big-time college football and third-down conversion rates than the University of Miami. If Florida State can continue to play well on first and second down and force Miami into third and distance, let's say third and eight or more, that really favors the Knowles. Hopefully, no penalties, okay? That aided Wake Forest last week, continued drives, and gave them automatic first downs. So that's something to keep an eye on in this matchup. Looks like Featherston will finally play. Had some tightness last week. Did not play against Wake Forest when the belief was that he would be able to give it a go. Um, you're going to lose Andrews. Uh, he's out at least two to three weeks with the sprain of the ACL. Really liked what I saw in Derwin James. He is a beast off of the line of scrimmage in pass rush situation. He may be their best pass rusher right now. Reminds you a little bit of the way that they used LaMarcus Joyner uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, that is obviously um, a, a major uh, point of emphasis that this football team is trying to do under Charles Kelly. Find a way to create 
a little bit of pressure. Miami's pretty good on that offensive line. They're not a typical Miami offensive line. What I mean by a typical, you know, late 80s, 90s, into the early 2000s, a dominant offensive line. But they do a nice job pass protecting uh, their quarterback, Kaya. So they're going to have to try to do some things here to get at the quarterback. I'd expect a little bit more with Derwin James. Hopefully, Terrence Smith can play. I think overall, he's been their second best defensive player, only behind Ramsey, who showed us last Saturday that he is human. He was beaten a few times there by Wake Forest wide receivers. Overall, this is what it's all about. This is college football. I could sit here for hours. I could start pouring shots of this and shots of, uh, of Maker's Mark and, and relive um, my freshman year when they have a 19-3 lead against the U. And for one reason or another, they don't put Deion Sanders on Michael Irvin. And Miami comes back and wins 26-25 uh, in a day when there was no overtime. Instead of kicking a PAT and trying to get it done there, they went for two, and they lost. The wide right ones, the wide right twos, uh, certainly wide, wide right one in 91, was another national championship type team, which they let, let get away. It, that's why this game is so important because of the history involved with these two programs. What do I see Saturday night at 8 o'clock? I see a very vocal crowd. I see a great opportunity for recruiting. I see this meaning so much for the state of Florida. Yes, maybe not nationally, but right here in uh, Jacksonville, right over there in Tallahassee and what have you, this game means everything for the 2015 Florida State Seminoles, who have won 33 of their last 34. Here's what I have for you. I think, again, it will be an ugly game. I think there'll be a little bit of the shaking of the head. There'll be a little bit of, we are in a rebuilding year. However, it includes a Florida State victory and they will move on to Louisville next week. Remember, Miami will be loose. They're playing for their head coach. Do they want him as their guy? If so, the effort will be incredible by the Canes. Florida State's going to have to match that effort, and they're also going to have to go out there and execute, particularly on the offensive side of the football. All right, there you go. We'll talk next week as Louisville comes in, and that one concerns me, folks. That is the ultimate trap ball game, especially at noon, where uh, there's a good opportunity there for after a bye week for Louisville to sneak in there and try to get a W. But we'll worry about that next week. Uh, folks, enjoy the ball game uh, this weekend. If you're in Tampa, I'll see you on the sideline. Really looking forward to seeing the Jaguars take on the Buccaneers as I do the radio sideline for the Jacksonville Jaguars right here on 1010 XL. That should be an interesting ball game as well. You can get me on Twitter, Baloo at 1010XL or just Baloo 1010XL or listen to me on 1010XL or 92.5 FM 3 to 7 each and every day. I am Rick Baloo live from Baloo Sports Bar. We'll talk again next week.